Within the past century, our technology has advanced to extraordinary levels. 100 years ago, the idea that we would reach the moon was nothing more than a fantasy. Yet now it is a fact of our everyday existence. With every single day we, as a united species, come closer to laying claim on other planets in our solar system and to exploring more space to see what is truly lurking out there just beyond our reach. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be looking at three scientific announcements and discoveries. Physicists at CERN just discovered a brand new particle. Researchers from the Large Hadron Collider Beauty Experiment, referred to as the LHCB from CERN, discovered a never-before-seen particle which has since been named the tetraquark, or TCC+. The EPSHEP, otherwise known as the European Physical Society Conference on High Energy Physics, have stated that this particle is composed of two quarks and two antiquarks, and referred to it as an exotic hadron. A quark is, in summary, the foundation of what matter is made of. These quarks can fuse together to form hadrons. The process is like that of neutrons and protons in the modern theory of atoms. What the EPSHEP meant by calling the tetraquark exotic was that the matter of TCC plus lives longer than any other such particle in existence before it. Furthermore, no other particles are known to contain two quarks and two antiquarks in quite the same way. Within recent memory, there have been several similar discoveries of exotic hadrons, most of these possessing up to five quarks at a time. But the TCC plus stands out even among the strangest of particles. This is because quarks have weights, and the tetraquark has heavy quarks and light antiquarks. The antiquarks in question are also different kinds, with one being an up antiquark and the other being a down antiquark. As a direct result, the decay process of the TCC plus becomes vastly complicated to the degree where it takes an incredibly long amount of time to decay. Inside the world of quantum physics, the discovery of the tetraquark brings with it unbound potential for the future. There is a chance of there being even more particles, like the TCC plus out there, waiting to be found, all of which could increase our understanding of this vast, unknown cosmos which we deem our home. Further studies on this particle are set to be conducted soon, with CERN physicists undoubtedly excited to conduct deeper research into this matter as it might reveal much about quantum physics that was previously unknown. NASA's Perseverance rover comes up empty after first Mars drilling attempt. Perseverance is one of NASA's Mars rovers. It has spent the last six months exploring the surface of the red planet in an attempt to drill into the Martian soil and bring new samples of Mars's exterior to Earth for in-depth analysis. The rover's mission was seemingly going well, and on the 6th of August, NASA was sure that it was a success after receiving a photograph of the drilled hole from the rover. Until Perseverance's operators opened the tube the sample was supposed to be in, and instead of Martian rock, they found it empty. Jennifer Trosper, Perseverance's project manager, stated about the occurrence. It went really well, other than the rock behaved in a way that didn't allow us to get any sample in the tube. We need a more cooperative type of rock. This one was crumbly. It may have had a surface that was hard, but once we got in there, all the grains just sort of came apart. However, during the sampling tests on Earth, rocks did not crumble and none of the other rovers had similar issues. At the very least, all is not lost. Despite the tube sample lacking the desired rock, it did hold something vital, Martian air. Though the sample of Mars's atmosphere was an afterthought meant for a different sample tube, it provided NASA with a portion of further samples to analyze, and with 43 other sample tubes, Perseverance can easily try again to collect more Martian rocks. Despite the worrying implications behind Perseverance failing to bring the rock to Earth, Trosper assures the public that it is not a problem with Perseverance itself. This September, Perseverance's project team plans on utilizing the help of scientific instruments to aid the rover in its quest to deliver a sample. The instruments will confirm the sample was taken and placed into the tube before it gets sealed. This next sample tube will not be sent back to Earth just yet, as NASA plans on having Perseverance fill and keep the remainder of its tubes sealed until they are picked up at a later time in the future during other Mars missions. 
Martian samples are crucial for investigations regarding life on Mars and whether past life once flourished on the rocky planet. Louise Jandura, the chief engineer in charge of the Perseverance project, remarked how what followed later in the morning was a roller coaster of emotions. It took a few minutes for this reality to sink in. Despite Trosper's insistence that such a thing will not occur in the future, it is evident that many members of the NASA team were distraught over the lack of sample and took Perseverance's failure to heart. One theory suggests that Perseverance had the core rock but dropped it, though if this happened NASA would have surely found the remnants of the sample's broken pieces on the surface of Mars, which they have not. According to a member of the team, the tube itself was very clean, not even dusty, suggesting that there was perhaps nothing that had ever gotten into the tube. Currently, the best theory is that the rover accidentally destroyed the core sample while it drilled the surface, explaining why they cannot see any broken pieces. The Jezero crater where NASA is hoping to collect samples from was once a lake, so there is a great hope there will be traces of primordial microbes hidden in the rocks. Where else could Cleopatra be buried? As the archaeological community continues to search for Cleopatra, theories and rumors continue to emerge as to her final resting place. It's important to remember that 20% of ancient Alexandria, the town where Cleo and Mark Antony lived, is actually underwater, so there is always a chance that their tomb sits at the bottom of the sea, in which case it's not likely that it will ever be found. In fact, French researchers began to excavate underwater in the 1990s and did find several indications of ancient life in the town. These included busts, stone sphinxes, building foundations, and more. However, nothing concrete came up directly regarding Cleopatra and Mark Antony's tomb. Therefore, the search went on. The authorities began to map the seabed and more and more ancient structures emerged but they failed to find any conclusive evidence of Cleopatra's tomb. The team want to find a statue or commemorative piece of Cleopatra, which in turn may point to a tomb or burial site. Chances are, however, that this burial site is actually deep under the sea floor. Returning to Kathleen Martinez's theory of the temple burial, she spoke of why she believed that Queen Cleo had been buried in a temple. The Egyptians were superstitious religious people, and the religious link may have some weight to it. Kathleen Martinez said, What brought me to the conclusion that Taposiris Magna was a possible place for Cleopatra's hidden tomb was the idea that when she passed away, a ritual act of deep religious significance was carried out in a very strict, spiritualized ceremony. Cleopatra negotiated with Octavian to allow her to bury Mark Antony in Egypt. She wanted to be buried with him, because she wanted to reenact the legend of Isis and Osiris. The meaning of Osiris is that it grants immortality. After they have both passed away, the gods would allow Cleopatra to live with Antony in another form of existence, so they would have eternal life together. The sea, the land, or underneath both are all plausible locations where Cleopatra could have been buried. However, for the time being, it looks like the mystery continues. These mysteries continue to confuse researchers to this day. After all, a dynasty that existed thousands of years ago is bound to elicit many questions, some running deeper than others. The seven human footprints are likely the oldest evidence of Homo sapiens on the Arabian Peninsula. The autumn of 2020 saw a remarkable archaeological discovery that gave us a glimpse into the lives of ancient humans, where we travelled and possible actions taken within daily routines. There were preserved human footprints found in Saudi Arabia's Nefert Desert, where a lake once sat. Researchers believe that this marks the presence of humans at the lake, but only for a brief interaction over 100,000 years ago. There has been an analysis of the rock around this area, concluding that the sediment dates to being between 112,000 and 121,000 years old. If this dating is in fact accurate, then this makes these seven human footprints the oldest evidence that we know of to support the presence of early Homo sapiens on the Arabian Peninsula. Biologist Matthew Stewart, affiliated with the Max Planck Institute for Chemical Ecology in Jenner, 
Germany and colleagues, explained that the ancient Homo sapiens were more than likely employing the site, referred to as Alathar, as a watering hole. Further explanations explain this is a likely spot to gather food due to neighbouring grasslands. However, many do not think that this was a regular visit, as the research conducted upon the sediment indicated the lake had been shrinking, like many in the region in this time. Furthermore, very few hunting tools and animal bones being present implies a short-term visit too. Similar sites have found 107 camel footprints and 43 elephant footprints, though none of these carry as much scientific weight and potential for new studies as the human footprints found. But what do you make of these fascinating discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.